Welcome to part three of my crash course on supply and demand. Today's topic is elasticity. Elasticity is measuring how much quantity changes given a change in something else. In today's case, we're looking at how much quantity demanded changes given a change in price. Remember that price and quantity are inversely related. So if price rises, quantity demanded falls. In other words, some customers shop somewhere else. However, the customers who we keep will now be paying more. So do we end up with more revenue or less? And that's the question that price elasticity of demand measures. Knowing what will happen if you raise or lower your price is essential for firms. Quite often, you read of a firm increasing its price and seeing its revenue fall. Currently, several state governments are raising taxes on items such as cigarettes in order to fill budget shortfalls, directly raising the price of those items. However, some of those states are finding that instead of increasing tax revenue, the new taxes are actually decreasing it. The states would have been better off lowering taxes on those items, which seems counterintuitive. But here's how it works. Here's a demand curve with a relatively flat slope. And here have, I have plotted two, two prices and two quantities. Now the law of demand shows that lowering the price from price one to price two causes an increase in quantity demanded. But note a feature here. I only lowered price a tiny bit, but it led to a huge increase in quantity demanded. And that has big implications. I'm earning a little bit less revenue per unit sold, but selling a much larger amount of units. This is what we call a relatively elastic demand curve. Now here's a much steeper curve. I have raised price by an enormous amount here, but quantity demanded barely changes. So I'm earning a lot more revenue per unit sold and losing just a few customers. This is what we call a relatively inelastic demand curve. So what causes curves to be shaped differently? First, if an item is essential to you, it, you may uh, be willing to buy it no matter what the price is. If it's not essential to you, then if the price goes up even a little bit, you might greatly reduce your consumption. Second, a bigger chunk of your budget an item is, the more you'll look for alternatives if the price rises. But if it's a trivial part of your budget, it probably isn't worth it to you to find an alternative. For example, if a box of matches goes from costing 25 cents to 50 cents, that's a 100% price increase. But you're probably not going to avoid buying the matches because 50 cents is a pretty trivial amount and it's not worth it uh, to you to find an alternative. The time horizon also plays a role. Curves become flatter or more elastic in the long run. For example, suppose gasoline jumps from $3 to $4 a gallon overnight, a 33% increase. You're probably still going to put enough gas in the car in the morning to get to work, the same as you always do. But on your way to work, you're going to think about how you can start carpooling or trading your car for a more fuel-efficient vehicle in order to greatly reduce your gasoline consumption. In other words, your demand curve for gasoline will become much more flat over time. We can calculate price elasticity more, formu more formally with this formula. The elasticity coefficient, the lowercase e, equals the percentage change in quantity divi divided by the percentage change in price. Suppose you lower your price 2% to see what will happen. Well, you find that orders for your product happen to go up by 8%. Our elasticity coefficient then comes out to negative 4. But what does that mean? Well, take the absolute value of negative 4, and that equals 4. This tells us that sales increase by four times the magnitude of the 2% decrease in price. If the absolute value of our coefficient is greater than 1, then we say it is relatively elastic. If it's less than 1, we say it's relatively inelastic. And if it's equal to 1, we call that unitary elastic. So why does this matter? Well, if demand is relatively elastic, then lowering your price increases your revenue. If you raise your price, you will decrease your revenue. Returning to our example where the elasticity coefficient was 4, the magnitude of the increase in sales outweighs the lower price of the product. So in this case, revenue increases with the decrease in price. The opposite is true when the coefficient is less than 1. That means lowering your price will decrease your revenue, and increasing your price will increase your revenue. And if the coefficient is equal to 1, congratulations, you are maximizing your revenue at the price that you are charging. If we're dealing with simple straight line demand curves, then our elasticity coefficient will be different between every two points that we measure. And that has in interesting implications. 
We use this formula for calculating elasticity between two points on the demand curve. This is called the midpoint method. It's the way we commonly do this in Econ 101. We're sort of taking an average of positions between two points. Just follow the formula, and you'll be fine. Well, here's a demand curve with two prices and two quantities plotted. I'm going to make the lower price my P1 and see what happens when the price is raised from 1 to 2. I record the values accordingly, as shown here. And now I can plug these values into my formula. And here's my formula again. And here are the numbers from the previous slide plugged into the formula. Note that the quantities go on top and the prices go on the bottom. Working the algebra gives you an elasticity coefficient of negative 0.14. The absolute value of this is 0.14, which we can remember means demand is relatively inelastic at this point. It's less than 1. The firm raised its price, but it didn't lose much in sales. This means that the firm increased its revenue by raising the price. Well, how do I know revenue is increased? Well, I'll just simply work it out. Revenue is price times quantity. When price was $1, revenue was $110. And when the price increased to $2, revenue increased, as shown here. So when demand is relatively inelastic, raising price increases the firm's revenue. Now let's look at two more points on the same demand curve, this time at higher prices. What happens when the price rises from 10 to 11? Again, here is my formula. And here are the prices and quantities plugged in. Working the math gives us a coefficient of negative 7. And since the absolute value of this is greater than 1, demand is relatively elastic between these points. This means that the firm is earning more per unit sold, but sales dropped off by a much greater amount. The increase in price caused a decrease in revenue, and the firm lost money by raising its price at this point. Just to prove it again, let's calculate the revenues. At a price of $10, revenue was 200 at a price of 11, revenue was 110, which is a definite decrease. When demand is relatively elastic, a firm will decrease its revenue by raising its price. If it lowered its price instead, the firm would see revenue increase. So from these calculations, we can see that at higher prices, the straight line demand curve is more elastic. And at lower prices, the curve is more inelastic. Firms operating at the bottom end of the demand curve can increase revenue by raising their price, moving up the curve. On the other hand, firms at the top end can increase revenue by lowering their price, moving down the curve. And that's important to remember. Eventually, we converge on the dead center of this curve, as shown here, which is the halfway point. This happens to be our unitary elastic point, where revenue is maximized. Indeed, if we calculate revenue at this point, we find that it equals 360. That's higher than any revenue number we've seen so far. And that's where revenue is as big as it can possibly be on this demand curve. So our complete curve looks like this. Elastic on the high end, inelastic on the low end, unitary elastic at the dead center. If you're a business, you need to think about this when considering a price change. The effect on your revenue and profit will be determined by where you're at on your demand curve. It's true that the law of demand says that you will sell fewer units, meaning you will have fewer customers if you raise your price. But raising the price might increase your profit, which can let you expand your production or invest in research into making your product better. As mentioned before, increasing a tax on something doesn't always increase revenue. A tax increase is simply an increase in price. Governments need to be mindful of elasticity, just as firms do. Often, firms and governments figure this out simply by experimenting and looking at the results. They also hire economists to help them separate, separate out the results from every other factor that may have influenced the amount sold. So these are the effects of price changes listed for you again. These are the things that you really need to remember. I thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful, and I welcome any feedback you may have.